Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today I'm out at the Georgia Museum of Agriculture uh, where I do a good bit of volunteer work. And if you guys have followed my channel regularly, you, you've probably seen me do a lot of things out here over the years. And they have reached out to me and asked if I would help them with a project uh, to, to do something with this steam engine and boiler that you see behind me. And this is something that honestly, guys, we're gonna need your help to make a reality, which is why we're doing this video today. So what we got here, this is a boiler and steam engine. Both of them were built by the Frick Company back in 1935. I've been told that this is one of the last boilers that Frick built. I think they did make some engines later, but, but uh, this is one of the last boilers. At least that's what I have been told. I'm not an expert, but that's what I've been told. Uh, the engine up top is, uh, what is it, 11 by 14. So uh, what is that, 11 inch cylinder, 14 inch stroke. And uh, I've always been told it's about a 110 horsepower engine uh, that's up there. And this steam engine and boiler for many, many years sat out here and it ran the cotton gin exhibit at the museum. So every fall they would fire up their cotton gin, which was a turn of the century era cotton gin, and they would demonstrate cotton ginning to the public. And it was powered by this steam engine and boiler. The cotton gin exhibit was put together back in the 1970s. I think they really got it going in the late 1970s. And at that time, the museum was able to locate this steam engine and boiler from a family here in Georgia that donated it to the museum. And uh, they were able to do some work to it and get it going. And they used this boiler and steam engine up until just a few years ago. Unfortunately, over the last 10 years, uh, the museum has had a really difficult time uh, with our steam boilers and that our insurance company that we have to have for liability insurance that comes through the state of Georgia because the museum is a state-owned museum, they were really wanting to get all these old riveted boilers off the books. They felt like they were a liability. Uh, they didn't want any part of them. And uh, over the course of like, uh, several years, they came through our museum and basically condemned all of the old boilers that we had. Fortunately, uh, we had a, a, a capital campaign several years ago. We were able to raise the money and we actually got a brand new boiler built that is a modern welded boiler, ASME certified boiler that meets all the modern codes, uh, which is the, the insurance companies are cool with. Uh, we were able to get that. When we did that, it was decided that we were actually not going to use this boiler and engine. Uh, we were going to use a different engine, and we actually downsized the engine a little bit. We went up to about an 80 horsepower engine. It's also made by Frick. Uh, we worked with Jonas Stutzman, who's an Amish boiler maker and steam engine guy. He actually built the new boiler. He restored the steam engine. We purchased all that from him, and we currently have our exhibit where we run each fall uh, using that setup. This boiler and engine, uh, there's a little bit of a convoluted story about it, but it actually left the museum. Uh, we had a, a donor that made a deal with us and actually made a fairly significant contribution towards the project for the new boiler. And uh, he wanted to take this one and, and use it or take it to his farm and just kind of have it in his personal collection. And through a course of events, uh, he's actually decided that he's giving it back to the museum and uh, it's coming back here now. Uh, when he got it, he built this, uh, this carriage that it's on so that he could transport it, um, but that of course is not original. So what am I doing this video about? Our museum wants to do a cosmetic restoration on the steam engine and boiler and get it where we can actually have it as an exhibit here at the museum. Uh, unfortunately, even though uh, a private person could probably do some work to this boiler and uh, get it where it's usable and completely safe, that's just never going to be a reality here at the museum. And uh, because of that, uh, we're doing a full-blown restoration just really is not an option for us. But we would like to have it to use as an interpretive piece that we can have on display and be able to show the public. And so our plans is to come in here and do a complete cosmetic restoration on this and then uh, build a outdoor uh, shelter that it can be put under uh, where it can be displayed and, but be protected from the weather. To do that, unfortunately it costs money and uh, our museum is, uh, I won't say struggling, but yeah, I may be struggling a little bit right now because of COVID. The museum's actually been closed since March to the public. Good news is, is we are reopening uh, this fall. Uh, probably limited on people that can come in and what have you, but uh, 
Uh, it's been a tough time the last few months. They don't really have a whole lot of money that they can dedicate toward this project. Uh, and I stepped in and said, you know what? I'm going to ask my viewers if they can help make this project a reality. And that is exactly what I'm doing today. Uh, this is a, a plea to you guys to be able to help out the museum and be able to bring this thing back to life. We've put together a budget. It's not going to be terribly expensive. I, we need about $4,000, and I think we can do everything we want to do. Uh, we're going to have the boiler uh, completely sandblasted, primed, and painted. The steam engine is going to come off before we do the sandblast, and we don't want to sandblast the engine just because we want to make sure we keep it in good shape. Even though we're doing a cosmetic restoration, we don't want to damage it by getting sand down into the open bearings and all that. So that's going to come off. We will clean it up uh, by hand and uh, get it repainted, everything else. And then uh, we're gonna, again, build a shelter to put this thing under so that it is out of the weather uh, and not just getting rained on outside or anything like that. So my ask for you guys is, is we'll try to get some folks to kick in a little bit of money to kind of help get this project going. To do that, uh, we're gonna be working through the ABAC Foundation. ABAC stands for the Abraham Baldwin Agricultural College. ABAC is the organization that actually owns and runs the museum. They are a 501c3 organization, uh, and we're gonna have something set up on their webpage where people can specifically go and make donations towards this project. Uh, because they are a 501c3 organization, those contributions will be tax deductible. Uh, so down in the description of the video, I'm going to put a link where you guys can go and click on that and make a contribution, whether it be $1 or $5 or $20 or $100 or whatever you feel like uh, kicking in. I will also say that at some point uh, in the near future, assuming that we can get by with the, the, all the restrictions around COVID, uh, it's looking like things are going to be opening up this fall. If things don't get worse, I'm going to probably have maybe one or two weekends where we have a work weekend and we try to get some of viewers to come in and help. I don't know exactly how that's going to look right now. We are probably going to be limited on the number of people that can come in just because of the regulations around the whole virus situation. Uh, but I'll be giving you guys some more input on that down the road. And uh, we'll probably have some Saturday work days to come in and uh, Get you guys, borrow your elbow grease to help do the, some of the work that needs to be done to this. I think it'll be a fun time, uh, let people work. We've done some work days in the past out here. It's been a while. Uh, so anyway, that's kind of our game plan going forward. So there you go. This is my plea for your help. I'll be helping out the Georgia Museum of Agriculture. will be helping to preserve a historic steam engine and boiler and get it on display where people can actually see it and appreciate it and uh, learn about how this stuff works and how it was used in our society uh, in the early part of the 1900s. With that, guys, I'm going to sign off. That will be a wrap on this video. As always, thanks for watching. Uh, please go check out that link. Make a contribution. Whatever you can kick in, it will be greatly appreciated. And uh, we hope to have this piece restored where it can be appreciated very soon. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later.